All right, I think you might enjoy this. Bruce to Revelation, and there's your Bible, a perfect timeline of your Bible clearly laid out so that you can't get confused, and the only way you can get confused is if you disobey 2 Timothy 2.15, the only verse in your Bible that tells you how to study your Bible. The only one. And yet everybody in Christianity wants to disobey the one verse that would open their understanding. No, 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 no. Okay, so you've heard me, if you've heard me at all, you've heard me say that the key to understanding the Bible, the secret, if you will, is faith. It's always been about faith. That they would obey, consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding. And if they obeyed that, there would be no denominations, there would be no different churches on every corner, we would all be walking by the same rule, and minding the same thing, and being of the same mind, and there'd be one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There wouldn't be two baptisms like they're taught today in the dispensation of grace and the body of Christ. I don't know what he's talking about here. There's the baptism of John, the water baptism. And then there's the baptism of Jesus, the spiritual baptism. That's the real baptism. The one when we are born of the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God comes upon us. If Christ, that wouldn't exist. But those all exist because people want to disobey that one simple little word verse and this especially this simple little phrase rightly dividing truth oh whoa if you divide the truth you get a lie do you not that's not what the Bible says that's not what second Timothy 215 says he's got it right there on the screen rightly dividing truth or rightly dividing the word of truth, which is the Bible. From truth and truth from truth. <clears throat> Amen. How simple it is. How simple it is to rightly divide. Huh. So, hold on a sec. There's something here I want to share with you. I'm not sure where it's at in the video, excuse me. But let's take a listen. Let's go right about here. This is truth, and this is truth. It's all truth. But we must rightly divide their truth from our truth. And our truth from their truth. That's what Paul meant by rightly dividing truth. Uh, Paul never even said that. All right crying out loud and, and listen to what he's saying here but we must rightly divide their truth from our truth he's pointing at the law and saying it's calling it their truth and then he's pointing to grace and calling it our truth and then and our truth from their truth That's and then calling the after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ calling it their truth I, what do you like there's different truths uh, and that does not ring true to me at all there's the truth regardless of what we believe regardless of anything at all there is the truth that's what Paul meant by rightly dividing truth that's not even what Paul says. All right, so now I, I don't want to get into all the nonsense and drivel this guy spews out of his mouth, but I want to take a look, if we, if it's possible, at his timeline. All right, if we can get an overshot of the nonsense here. All right, so we see here the law. And then we got grace. I can't really see up there. What if I did this? 
expand it a little bit. I want to take a look what's on the right side here. All right, if we can. Just give me a second here. There's a bunch of nonsense I have to go through. Right there it is. What do we got here? So we got the wrath of God. All right, and then we got the kingdom. A thousand years. You see that? So here's another guy who claims that Jesus Christ is not reigning right now. And he's going to reign after his return, after the wrath of God. He's going to reign for a thousand years. All right, and then I guess he takes over. I'm not sure. Nobody ever really explains it, do they? Is he the one that takes over after Jesus is done reigning? Or just Jesus just quits and that's it? and We're all doomed and to hell with it anyway. I mean, what are you teaching here? Seriously, what do you, what do you got going on here? I can't read that. He's got Matthew, Mark, and something else there. Or no, he's got two Matthew. He looks like Matthew 23. I'm not sure what that darkness says. Darkness into his marvelous light. Anybody see that? Out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which only lasts a thousand years. So, is it really even worth it? Is that not a good question? Let's see. I want to see what he's got going on over here. This is what I want to see. He's probably got a thousand of these online that you can look at, but right, judgment. Oh, oh, that's just brilliant. So you've got the wrath of God, which is the judgment of God. All right, so it's not confusing. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's when judgment occurs the judgment is are you saved or are you not saved if you are saved you are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and the, the Bible is very clear about this Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 the angels gather us together and we are lifted up in the air first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye right in a month in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump, we get the last trump in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. The last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's the judgment of God. Are you saved or are you not saved? There is no other judgment. Uh, what are you guys trying to sell here? Really? We go to Matthew 24 just to confirm the last trump. All right. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. I guess we leave that up there. Mark 13. All right. Obviously, it, if you don't know this, then you need to read your Bible. But Matthew 24, Mark 13. Luke 21 are parallel chapters, or at least they give this. They're talking. They, it's talking about the same end time because it, it's the same question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And does this verse actually say Trump? If it doesn't. It doesn't nullify because every description is the exactly same that what we read in Matthew 24 and Luke 21. It's the same. It's not a different rapture. It's not a different coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same. 
right, and this one might I don't remember this one doesn't say it either but we can conclude that it's the same end of the world Trump just like what we read in uh, in uh, first Thessalonians or even 1 Corinthians 15, 52, at the last trump. Right? And then what was the other verse I had there? The last trump. The last trump. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Does that have the word trump? Does it matter? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. This clearly is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Just like what we read in Matthew 24. When it says he shall appear in heaven. And Mark 13. And uh, right there. And they then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. And then Luke 21. Uh, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. And we go to Revelation. Behold, he come in clouds. Um, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen this verse parallels what we read in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 it's the same it's not a different rapture it's not a different coming of the Lord Jesus Christ it's the same all right now when Jesus comes we are changed this is the judgment of God in the unsaved now doesn't does it really matter I mean it does for for the sakes of, of judgment and righteousness and for order if you will the unsaved are going to be destroyed forever what's the point of saving us if you're gonna save them too um, it you know it doesn't make any sense in this idea that we're going to be changed in the twinkle of an eye and they're not and we're going to be living together uh, isn't that already happening right now so what was the point um, of Jesus coming if there is no difference see right now we are intermingled with unsaved people hellbound people the difference is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. Isn't that exactly what is asked of Jesus in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Well, when Jesus comes, it is the end of the world. And then the judgment of God, which happens at the end of the world, which there's only one end of the world is are you saved or are you not saved the saved are changed in the twinkling of an eye the unsaved are destroyed forever and I, we go we can go here do it like this Matthew 13 um, there's the parable of the wheat and the terror and you know, the, in the parable, they said, well, should we try to separate them now? I said, no, wait till harvest comes. And then harvest comes, there's the separation of the wheat and the tares. The wheat are gathered up in his barn, and the tares are burned. That's the end of the world. That's the judgment of God. The wheat are the saved. The tares are the unsaved. This is all throughout the Bible. And... The unsaved are gathered at our feet. We could parallel this with Revelation 20. The unsaved are gathered at our feet. That's the whole purpose of Satan being loosed at the end of the thousand years to gather them 
the unsaved people, and then fire comes down from God and devours them all. And you think about Genesis 3, where it says, Till I make thine enemy, oh, I'm sorry, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. And here, let's just open this up because. Uh, and, uh, here, let me read the whole thing. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the difference here. Uh, the seed of Satan, if you will, is the unbelievers. The seed of the woman is the believers. And the thou shalt bruise his heel. His heel is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when fire comes down out of heaven and stomps out the serpent forever. All right, there's that's when the tares are separated from the wheat. All right, and then of course, uh, again, you've you've read this many times in the Bible um, about how. Uh, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now you've read it over, if you've read the Bible several times, you've read this very statement very, several times. And this is exactly what it's talking about. This parallels what we read in Genesis 3.15 and also what we read in uh, Revelation 20, verse 1 was it verse 9 I forgot already let me see if I can find it until fire comes down out of heaven and devours them all verse 9 fire came down from God that's it's all the same thing man uh, you talk about rightly dividing the word of truth right there it is that's how you do it and it starts by having faith uh, I mean if it's not dividing the truth, man. You divide the truth, you're, you're going to end up with a lie. Dividing, you get... dividing the truth, man. Come on, get it right. You had it right there in front of you, and you dropped it. So, anyways, I just want to share this with you. And again, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, this, these timelines, you see people. They don't even pay attention to the Bible. I wonder if these guys, I mean, just because they wear a gray suit, have silver hair, and wear a purple tie, it doesn't mean they're an expert. And I have to even wonder, do they even read the Bible? Really, you got this fancy chart that you don't get from the Bible, you get it from somebody else. Now they might be learning from somebody else. That doesn't mean they're learning the Bible. This is like an entirely different religion. It really is because you're not getting. Well, what's that? Oh, that's not that's not enough. But you're not getting this idea of a thousand-year reign of Christ anywhere in the Bible. It's like Mormonism or or. Islam or something. I don't know what it is, man, but it's not in the Bible. <clears throat> this right there. You've got the Lord coming. I can't read any of that. It doesn't matter. you got the wrath of God, and then you've got the thousand-year kingdom. It, this, doesn't make, this doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, all right, and then you got seven years of tribulation. You're not going to see that in the Bible either. But uh, it's astonishing that they confuse tribulation with wrath. And again, I will continue to point this out when it comes to tribulation. John 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you. This is Jesus. That in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Alright, so this idea 
that the wrath of God and tribulation is the same. It's, it's. I, I don't get it. I really don't. The wrath of God happens at the end of the world, and the wrath is poured upon the unsaved people. It's not complicated. And, I mean, dispelling confusion of the Bible in only one hour? I contend this guy is casting a spell of confusion on the Bible in only one hour. Guaranteed.